So my wife called me over the other night and she said, husband, we got to talk. I said, what you want to talk about? She said, we got to talk about that scooter. I said, now, honey, I put my blood and sweat and tears into building that scooter. It took me six months and it's plenty safe. She said, if you don't build a go-kart instead of that scooter that's safer, I ain't going to have sex with you no more. So I looked her straight in the eye and I said, woman, you, you want that go-kart electric or, or petrol? All right, seriously though, we are going to build an electric go-kart out of this pile. Main bits are two Razor E100 scooters and then one E125. It's the same frame on all three, so we got lots of stuff to work with. I was able to source these from a garbage pile, a bin, and an unsuspecting kid's bedroom. This also nets us three 100 watt 24 volt motors. Those will go into the cart. That should get us about 10 miles per hour, 16 kilometers an hour. And then we've got a automotive windshield wiper motor and the rack from it. That's for the power steering for the go-kart because the idea is to make the entire thing remote controlled, uh, at least for the time when my kid doesn't want to actually drive it. All the electronics are there, including two off-road headlamps. Next step is going to be to take two of the frames. We're going to weld them together parallel and square. And that'll be the body of the go-kart. Let me clear a lot of the stuff away. This is a belated introduction, so I've got some stuff already prepared. And I'll show you what's next. Poof. Vanished. Here's where we're at so far. We've got two Razor E100 scooters. Totally stripped components. And then I've set them up in this custom-made frame. The most important part of this part of the build is to get both scooters not only perfectly parallel to each other, but once they're parallel, we need to get them exactly square. If they're out of square, we're going to have a hard time turning, so one front tire will be in front of the other. If they're not entirely square to each other, then we'll either be pigeon-toed, and we're going to get weird wear on the front tires, or if they're like that, again, we're getting weird wear on the back tires. Both of that's going to rob us of power, so take excess power from the battery, and then just cause odd wear on all our components and stress out all the joints on our welds. So I really wanted to take my time with this. Fortunately, I can't show you what I did for all this, at least in person, because I've already done it. However, I'm going to take you over to the CAD, which I have it about there, and then we'll come back here, and I'll tell you about where we're going to go next in the build. Okay, so to build that custom frame, all I did was take one piece of wood, I cut it in half, and then I laid two halves on top of each other. Now, I don't have faith that I can cut one piece of wood into two and end up with two identical pieces. So that's why I laid them together, and then I screwed the two pieces of wood together. From there, I used one board to trim the edges of the other. That way I'd get two identical pieces of wood. You can see me doing that with these red circles here, just cutting the second piece of wood. So now that I've got two identical pieces of wood that are screwed together, so guaranteed not to shift, that's when I drilled the holes for each of the pieces of all thread to mount the front and back axles of the scooters. Once the axle holes were drilled, I separated the two boards by the width that I wanted the scooter to be. I modeled it off of the size of my kid, but also the size of the sidewalks near my house because I want him to be able to only take up half of a standard sidewalk. That seems like a reasonable thing to me. It's only now that I decided I should actually color my pieces of wood like wood. I also used some other brackets at the front and the back of the frame. This helps pull everything into square and just make sure nothing shifted. So I've got both pieces of wood exactly square with each other, especially with that front and back bracket. No way they're going to shift, but they can still move into and away from each other to combat that, I used the all thread with some large washers and nuts so that way I could precisely set the distance between the two front tires and the two back tires. That way I could accurately measure from the center line of each tire and know that both 
scooters were exactly parallel and square to each other. So this is the mock-up of that custom frame that you saw on my desk. Let's jump over back to the desk and we'll talk about the rest. All right, now you're all caught up on the project. You know exactly what we've done and how we've done it. Any questions or comments, just stick them down below. I will get back to you. Before I go into video number two and what that's gonna be about, please hit that subscribe button. It's gonna help out the channel. Plus you'll get notified when video two comes out. Video two will be all about the steering design, fabrication, and installation. I am, I am excited for this video. Basing that off of this 12 volt automotive windshield wiper rack. So we're gonna steal a lot of the design from here. We're also gonna steal all of the ball joint assemblies and we're using this whole motor because we are doing power steering over on the go-kart. Definitely check that out. It's gonna be a lot of fun and I'll catch you guys next time.